were so lucky. Coming to the stage, Devela Ni Leonan from Atlantia. Good, my lords and ladies. I bring to you a tale not only to entertain, but to instruct performers. Otar languished within King Olaf's dungeon. You see, Otar had written love verses to Astrid, King Olaf's queen. And so when Otar returned to Norway, King Olaf of Norway had him thrown into the dungeon immediately with every intention of killing him. Luckily for Otar, his uncle, Sigvat, was a counselor of the king, and not only that, but a court poet to the king. And so one night, Sigvat snuck down to see his nephew. So, how are you enjoying yourself? Uncle, I have had more cheerful moments. Well, let's hear that poem of yours. And so Otar recited the poem. And Sigvat said, Oh, no surprise that the king would like to kill you. We must change the poem so that it is no longer quite so outspoken of love. And you must write a praise poem for King Olaf. He will want to hear the love verses. And once you finish that poem, you must go directly into the praise poem. It might help you. It might not, but he can only kill you once. <laughs> Thank you, Uncle. So Otar did exactly what Sigvat said, and after many more days of languishing, the guard brought him before King Olaf and Queen Astrid. And Olaf looked at Otar and said, let's hear that poem. And Otar recited the love verses, the new version, which was less steamy, <laughs> and then immediately began the praise poem, and the nobles were incensed. Stop right now! We have heard everything we need to hear! Cease! But Sigvat quieted them and said, No, no, let him finish. It is always good to hear praise of our king. And after all, he can kill Otar as easily after the poem as he can right now. So Otar finished the poem, and King Olaf looked at him. <sighs> A good poem, that. It has saved your head. But the trick will only work once. I advise you not to write any more poems about my queen. And Otar said, Thank you, sire. Though it is no handsome head that was saved. So King Olaf took a golden ring off his arm and gave it to Otar. And then Queen Astrid took a ring off her finger and gave that to Otar, saying, a gift, poet, for your praises of me. So, said the king, there is something between you. <laughs> Nonsense! I have simply rewarded him for his praises of me, as you have rewarded him for his praises of you. Nothing more and nothing less. And King Olaf said, <laughs> uh, and he was effectively silenced. <laughs> now, Otar stayed at King Olaf's court, and King Olaf treated him well. But as for writing another poem about a woman, Otar never, ever, ever, ever did that again. I thank you for your kind attention.